don't play, you don't play. The biggest challenge that I feel men face is actually confidence. And confidence dictates the opportunities that we're able to capitalize on, whether it be career opportunities or opportunities with women. And both tend to manifest themselves in negative self-talking yourself out of these opportunities that are presented to you. And I feel like it's far more prevalent when facing rejection from a woman than it is from an employer, for example. I feel like people tend to, or men rather, tend to take that more personally. And a lot of what men issues are at, at, the, at the crux of it is the fact that men are human and that a lot of the issues that women face, um, they're, they're more widely accepted, such as like insecurities and the like. And insecurities themselves by nature, they affect, directly affect your confidence. And I, would, I was thinking through this and I was thinking, what is the answer? And it depends largely on what the actual insecurity is that's, that's at the root causing the lack of confidence. And it could be, for example, one a, a really common one, I was speaking to some of my other friends about what are some of the biggest issues that they face as men. And a common one was the differential in between where they are in life versus where they want to be. And if you think about it, that's where a large percentage of a man's value is derived from his success and his ability to provide and I think that extends far beyond just strictly in a financial sense we could talk about that uh, later another episode maybe but that was something that was a reoccurring habit so or pattern that I've noticed and so the answer to that would be to devise a plan and actually work towards where you see yourself and envision yourself in the future and it's a direct correlation between competence and confidence so over time you will gradually accrue that and then the other part that I was thinking about is insecurity could also could stem from physical stature. So anything that you feel like is a, a part of your personal being, so like height, weight, uh, teeth, hair, things like that. And I guess my personal experience with the, the stature part. So I remember in when I was younger in fourth grade, I used to wear wristbands because I didn't, I didn't like being on the lankier side. And I didn't like, like looking like super skinny. So I would wear like the wristbands and after a while, like I think I may have stopped doing that after like a year or so, but it was just um, something that I had done because I was insecure about my size at that point in time. And then so all throughout school, I was still on the, on the, on the slimmer side, but I started to exercise more the older I got and then started to gain weight. And then present day, like recently I ran into uh, an old, uh, I guess a classmate of mine, somebody I played football with back in high school. And he didn't recognize me because just because I, I was so much bigger than what I used to be. Like, I think like when I graduated, I was maybe like 140, 145, maybe. And all the way to like 190. So he was like, he was pretty surprised. And that was, I guess, what my plan to overcome that particular insecurity. So I felt more comfortable about myself because I knew that at the heart of it, it was something that I didn't like that I could fix. And then also another thing that a lot of men are insecure about would be balding. So there was a point in time um, after I cut my hair where I noticed that my hair wasn't as thick as it used to be, as thinner. And it was a period of about two months where I would look in the mirror and I would just be angry. I would be pissed <laughs> because my hair was thinner. And it was just like, it was like an existential crisis. I, I don't, I don't um, have words to display or convey how, how angry that made me, but I come to realize there was nothing I could do about that. It was a genetic thing. I have uncles that have that are that are bald, <laughs> and it was like just accept it because the worst thing you could do about an insecurity is trying to hide it. It's like to take ownership fully of the things that you can't. So I think the best strategy really is kind of like what the Serenity Prayer says: accept the things that you can't uh, change and have the courage to change the things that you can. And so once I realized that, it was just like this is what it is. I mean, when if it happens, I'm gonna cut it before I start looking like George Jefferson because that was non-negotiable. And I was gonna keep like lifting and stuff because it was it was like, okay, well, you could either be Eustace Bag from Curse of Cowardly Dog or you could be Dwayne Johnson. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I think that's pretty much non-negotiable right there. So I set my path for myself. So it's all about like really being comfortable in your own self and accepting yourself. And that comes with a, a full awareness of what causes you to be insecure and in overcoming it by addressing the root issues as opposed to putting band-aids on them. So that's why I say confidence is one of the biggest issues that, that faces men.